how to do good deeds as taught by Jesus Christ part 9 the just Jesus evangelistic campaign day 468 since January the 20th 2017 day 835 since January the 1st 2016 Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. The Holy Bible reads, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Jesus knew who the, who the hypocrites were, and he knows who the hypocrites are today. For they love to pray, they love to be seen, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. And these people are extremely disgusting. You've seen them. The antics that they do, that they don't do at home, but they do it around other people. And these people who pray too hard. What? They don't pray like that at home. These people who pray too hard. People, cut it out. God is not hard of hearing like some of us older people are. God does not need hearing aid. People, some of you people, who you, you don't pray like this at home. You don't get in your prayer closet and you're raising your blood pressure, your veins. We see your veins about to pop out of your neck. And some we got some of you women who do this. You claim to be a great prayer warrior. May God bless you. I hope God is hearing your prayers. I hope it's for real. But do you do that at home? I'm just asking. But when you get out in the public, you sh you shout and you make statements. You don't make requests. You you just you got a speech going on. It is, quite honestly, disgusting. You're shouting at God, trying to show that you're sincere. That's not necessary, people. You do, do what you want. I ain't, I'm not mad at you. At least you're saying something to God. I don't know, what, I don't know whether, whether he hears you or not. But Jesus knows the hypocrites, the fakers, who don't pray at home mean as the devil at home towards your husband but you a great prayer warrior known around the world and when you pray you shout at God like you're mad at God God I've seen this people quit this cut it out God, I'm telling you, they grab these. God, please, God. People, God is not hard of hearing. What are you doing? You are showing out and showing off. Stop it. You don't pray like that in your prayer closet. If you do, no wonder your husband does not want to be around you. That's ridiculous. Don't do that. Pray like you pray at home. If you pray at all. All this straining and about your veins about the burst and screaming and oh God. Oh, oh come, people, people, people. Come on. Come on. Come on. Do you pray like that at home? In your soul, in your prayer closet? Do you pray every morning with your family like that? If you do, may God bless you. Good on you. Good on you. 
But you're going to be dead soon because that's not necessary. God can hear your prayers even if you don't utter any words. Stop trying to show people how much of a prayer warrior you are. It will, it will be known by what you do and what you say if you're going to minister to people. They will know that you have been with God. You, you can't fake that. Okay, so stop being a hypocrite. God knows, and if you don't pray at home, please don't pray in public. If you're not praying with your ch husband and your children, your husband, uh, uh, wife and your children, your spouse and your children or whatever, uh, don't, every morning, every day, don't go out and try to lead somebody else in prayer. Just quit it. Stop it. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and they're known as prayers. They're known as prayers. Are you known as a mighty prayer? Well then I can assure you that you're probably not a mighty prayer. You're a hypocrite. You're just making people think that. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues. Biting at the bits to pray. You ought not to be that way. And in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you they have their reward. But thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door. Pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And this can also deal, uh, talk about, uh, they think that they're going to be heard by their loud speaking. And, and no, 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 no. It doesn't work that way, people. God's more concerned about your heart. If you're very verbal and like to talk a whole lot and pray a whole long prayer and all loud, you're probably, your heart is probably not right with God. I don't know. God knows. But I doubt it very seriously. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth. See, this is why you don't have to shout at God. This is why you don't have to say a whole lot of words to God. Jesus is telling you right now, be not ye therefore like unto them. Them who? These hypocrites. These phonies. These fakes. These people who believe they have to say a whole lot of words to God. Like he doesn't know what is going on. These people who, who, who somehow believe you need to shout to your veins about to burst out of your neck. Screaming at God. These people. Thinking that volume. Um, shows how sincere you are. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father. Your heavenly father God. Knoweth what things ye have need of. Before you ask him. Yet. Before you ask that question. He still wants you to pray. Let's pray. Holy Father God we thank you. We praise you for your precious. And holy word. Help us to take heed to it. To love it more. To cherish it. To obey it. And to. Uh, share it with others. And help us, Lord, to be not like the hypocrites, but to be sincere in our prayer life. And uh, not to be uh, proud about being known as a prayer. Lord, have mercy on us. And forgive us of this foolishness. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. 
and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, from this powerful passage from the Word of God, we have seen the importance of praying in private before God and God alone and not praying to be seen. Not praying to be known as a great prayer. I assure you that if you're known as a great prayer or she's a prayer warrior, he's a prayer warrior. How do you how do we know? Nobody is supposed to be in your closet. We will know that you are a great prayer warrior, not because you drive a Bentley, but maybe your children will turn out right. Maybe your Sunday school a message is powerful and it and, and people can people can sense that you have been with God that you have been with Jesus in prayer you, there's no other way for folks to know they can't know by your screaming and shouting and things popping out of your head getting ready to have a stroke trying to impress people talking all loud and talking all long and thinking that your eloquence means something. Your eloquence in prayer means nothing. Now there are some people who can string some words together. And most preachers can do that. But they don't. If they're sincere they're not trying to do that. It's just a God given gift. But it's a little old lady. It's a little old lady. She's a widow. She sits on the third row. She hardly says anything. She has a little hat on her head. She wears. Uh, she has four outfits that she wears every week to church. She doesn't say anything. She gives her two. Uh, she gives her, her her little two mites into the offering plate. She's on welfare. Uh, that's the woman who can get a hold of God. And she never tries to show that she has some special relationship with God by trying to show off in public about prayer. But she probably prays more, e more effectively uh, than even the pastor of the church. <laughs> and by the way, most pastors don't pray as they should. You say, preach, how do you know? Because well, they told me so. Thank God for the honesty. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Most pastors are multi-talented and multi-gifted. They have a certain charisma. Those who are called by God. And they can get more done, uh, you know, as far as work is concerned, just by those abilities and those talents that most people can do if they... Uh, they get more done in a week than, than most people can take uh, can do in a year, just because of those gifts. And I've had them to tell me this, and so therefore they don't pray as they should. This happens to all of us in some way. We got we have certain abilities, certain gifts, certain talents that we don't even think about it. We just can do it and get it done. Bam. We don't even pray about it. Some of us have gifts and talents that we use. We don't even pray about it. You know it. <laughs> you know it. You don't even. Yeah, yeah. That's easy to me. That's easy peasy. No, you don't even pray before. Some, some have the gift of writing. They don't pray before they write. Because they know they can get it done. God already blessed them with that ability. And so they don't pray. Lord, help me to write this. You should. They put pen to paper and magic happens. Magic happens. They don't pray. They're preaching. There's some preachers who don't even study, much less pray. But they get behind that pulpit, man. They just as, just as powerful and just as uh, 
eloquent as they can be. And when they run out of words to say because they didn't study, they just start singing. And people just love it. They, they haven't prayed a lick. Now, don't misunderstand me. They can get a whole lot more done if they did pray with the talent and the gifts that God gave them. So thank God for the widow on the third row. Who gives $9 and 50 cents a week. Well, she's a prayer warrior. She's in that closet praying for her pastor. What little power he has come from her praying. Why ought we to be committed to praying in secret with the intent of being seen and heard by God alone? Jesus Christ tells us why in the latter part of verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, your door, when you shut your door, pray to your Father which is in secret. And thy Father, your Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. See, that's the proof that you're a prayer warrior when you're rewarded openly. And people can see it. They don't know how you got it. They don't know what you doing? What you're doing? They don't know how much money you have, but somehow God did something for you. He has not done for them, because they are out there straining and trying to show people, as hypocrites, how much of a prayer warrior they are, and they don't have anything to show for it. But you went to your closet by yourself, and God will reward you openly. Now it seems quite obvious to say that God sees what we are doing in secret. Of course he does. There's no doubt about it. By the way, God sees everything we're doing in secret. Even the evil things you do in secret. God knows. Uh, but he also hears our prayer in secret. The point for us is, do we really believe that God sees us and hears us in secret? And that he is listening to our prayers offered up to him in secret. A secret prayer is a matter of faith. And by the way, there's some, watch this now, my beloved. You talk about lawyer-client privilege, presidential privilege, and confidentiality. Listen to me very well. There are some things that you ought to be praying about that nobody else needs to know about. There are some things that uh, you know that you're praying about that you don't want anybody to know about amen somebody oh yes uh, you ought to have some secret prayers that you don't want nobody even your spouse to hear That you only want God to hear. Uh, after you have had family devotions and family prayer. Uh, you ought to be praying about some things just between you and God. I can't get many amens over here to the right. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. There ought to be some 
not only secret prayer, but some secret things. And how many of you were you were in church praying publicly with the church in a concert of prayer or praying responsively, uh, and you had to take a little uh, break from the general prayer that everybody else was praying in the concert of prayer, and you had to pray for something uh, for yourself in secret to God that nobody else knew about. And nobody else knows about. Just you and God. Isn't it wonderful that we have a God who not only we can pray in secret. And he hears us in secret. And y'all don't hear me. And we have a God who will keep the secret. Amen somebody. Oh, that's a wonderful thing. Y'all don't hear me. That's a wonderful thing. To have a God to pray for some things that we want to have in secret. And we want to keep it secret. And he hears us in secret. And he answers our prayers in secret. And he keeps the secret. Oh yes, God, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. God is a great secret keeper. If you come right with God. And we're not talking about hiding sin. And there are some sins that need to be divulged. And, and quite honestly and quite frankly, I believe that if you sin against your vows against God, uh, you husbands, if you have sex with somebody outside of your marriage vows and the marriage bond, you ought to tell God and you ought to tell your wife and let the chips fall where they may. Because it's going to come up, it's going to come up, it's going to come up. My word, just go ahead and nip it in the bud because that ugliness is going to pop up like an ugly pimple. Same thing for wives. Go ahead on and tell the truth and shame the devil. But there are some things that you need to pray to God in secret about and nobody needs to know about it. We're not only talking about sin, we're talking about many other things. Some of you have cancer. The doctor just told you you have cancer and you don't want nobody to know about it. Uh, and you, you're taking it to God in prayer. You're not like many people. First place they go is go among the saints. I have cancer like this is a badge of honor. Please uh, have mercy on me. Please show me pity. I have cancer. Show me pity. I was diagnosed with cancer. Now in many cases the doctor probably said. You have a little, little bitty little dot of skin cancer on your hand. And I'm going to take it off right now. And that's all it is, okay? And then you, you walk out of there with your little proud self. I was diagnosed with cancer. Y'all pray for me, and you don't have any cancer at all. You liar. And you wait for the, ooh, oh, what? Oh, my soul. Oh, my. Well, girl, I'll be praying for you. My, 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 the devil is a lie. Stop lying. These people who claim they say things like that knowing that there's already beat. If we are to be consistent and faithful in prayer, we must really believe that God sees us and hears us while we pray. Now I can't give you that. God is not going to come out of the sky and give you that. you got to have faith in God. Faith means you don't see nothing. That's bad English, but it's true. Okay, that's what it means. 
You don't see nothing. It's a double negative, but I, it's okay. Another thing we must remember is that we are praying to God Almighty. God Almighty, who is so almighty, he's invisible. God is so awesome, he says, believe in me even though you can't see me. But you know I'm there. Jesus points this out by saying that the Father... The Heavenly Father not only sees us in secret, but that He is in secret Himself as well. So God, see this is why the folks used to say a long time ago, God works in mysterious ways. God is there, you can't see Him. It's all a mystery. But you know He's there. And you know he can deliver because he delivered so many times before. You know he is a God who hears prayer because he's heard your prayers. The pulpit commentary says the thought here may be partly that to be unseen of men is to help to communion with him who is also unseen by them but especially that the manner of our actions ought to resemble that of our fathers who is himself unseen and works unseen somebody say man that's our God for you Many of us become concerned with who sees us carrying out our Christian service. Be it praying, be it preaching, or ministering in some other way. It reminds me of the person who, the politician, who only goes out with a camera crew to go help uh, with... Uh, uh, habitat for humanity and help build somebody's house or they always have a camera crew when they go out and do any kind of public service and uh, and they get a hammer to nail up something and say, you get, hey, did you get that? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. These people who the only time they want to serve is when somebody's taking a picture or there's a camera on them and then as soon as they do a little action, okay, did you get that? Did you get a good shot? Uh, that's what it's all about. No, 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 no. That's not what it's all about. That's hypocrisy. If you really want to do it, uh, do it when nobody can see you do it. Just go ahead and help somebody. Understand that God can see you. We forget that God himself does not allow us to see him or to know what he is doing. If you have been saved long enough, you have probably had an experience when you were worried or concerned about something. And after a while, everything was resolved. And you realized that God had been working out your situation even though you could not see or sense that he was doing so. God had answered your prayers, your secret prayers. In a way, he was doing as Jesus describes in his verse, rather than this verse, he is our Father in secret, acting in secret on your behalf for His glory. So when you go into your secret place, your closet to pray, when you go into your uh, special room to pray, don't allow yourself to become discouraged 
by what may seem like the absence of God. Because he's there. Have faith that he is there with you in your private place of prayer. You don't need anybody else in there with you. It's okay to pray with your spouse. It's okay to pray with your family. Uh, it's okay to pray with your uh, prayer partner. It's okay. it's okay to pray with your church. But there are times throughout the day that God wants to pray, wants you to pray to Him alone. So He can really do some things in you and for you and for yours. For the glory, for His glory, praise and honor. By the way, how many of you are worried about your adult children, your teenage children, yet you don't pray privately for them? You don't run to your prayer closet and pray for them. You would rather worry than pray. And that is not good. I would encourage you to go to your secret place. Pray for your children. Pray that God would protect them. That God would keep them back from the evil man and the evil woman and even evil people in the church. That God would protect them from uh, the devil. And that God would protect them from themselves. And I guarantee you that God will reward you openly. So go to your closet, your secret place, and pray. Let's all stand. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to spend more time alone praying than we do praying with others and praying in the public. Have mercy and grace upon us and forgive us of not praying in our secret place alone as we should. Lord God in heaven, grant us your grace and your faith, the power of your Holy Spirit to pray without ceasing and to pray throughout this day in the secret places of our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. You may be seated. Now ladies and gentlemen, if you are with us today and you do not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in Him for salvation from sin and hell. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have messed up. We all have failed God. And that's just the truth. I know that you think you're more special than others, but you're not. We're all in the same boat, black, white, red, and yellow. We're all guilty. Secondly, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. We die physically. We're aging physically because we're dying. Do you know how expensive a body is? I don't think anybody has put a price on it, but it's in the billions of dollars, my dear friend. Just the brain alone uh, has to be worth $10 billion. Unless you have forgotten, a human brain made the computer. Do you really believe that God would create us with... The, uh, billion dollar bodies for us to just die off 
That was not the original purpose. He made us to live forever. But we messed up. Some of you who have children, you understand how a child can mess up his life or her life. They had the same privileges, same opportunities as the other children, same blessings, same chance. Uh, two did well and the third one chose not to do well. And now they're going through hell. We messed up. God didn't. So thirdly, accept the fact, dear friend, that you are on the road to hell. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. For the soul will live forever. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Or the lake of fire. Are you on your way to hell? Are you on your way to the lake of fire for eternity? Nobody's trying to scare you because God wants to save you from hell and save you to heaven to be with him. He did this because, he did all of this because he loves his creatures. He loves us. I don't understand why and you don't understand why, but he knows why. And he loved us so much, Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, God's Son, Jesus Christ. He was speaking about himself. Uh, the man who has never sinned, never had an evil thought, never did anything wrong, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, God, Emmanuel, with us, that whosoever, that word whosoever means anybody at any time, black, white, red, or yellow, believeth in him. That's all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. Should not perish. Perish where? In the hell, in the lake of fire I just uh, told you about. But have everlasting life. Where? In heaven. Uh, this, the heaven that I just told you about. And all you have to do to be saved from hell and saved to heaven is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that God sent because he loves you. Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for our sins. He went through our hell so that we would not have to go to hell and so that we could go to heaven that's how much God loves you and me he died was buried and rose again and all you have to do is believe in him the Bible says in Romans 10 9 uh, that if uh, you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friend, and you shall be saved. Pray and ask him to save you, and he will. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart, believing in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. And be saved today from hell and saved to heaven. Repeat after me. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done wrong in your life. I have done wrong rather than my life. I have broken your Ten Commandments. I have lied before. I've stolen before. I've lusted after people and things before. And many other sins. 
For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and receiving him as your Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Jesus Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10:9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved uh, let me say this first. If you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today, please email me at dw 3 at com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Dear friend, God loves you. We love you. And may God bless you real good is my prayer.